Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you how to use Windows Deployment Services to sysprep and capture an image and then to upload that image to the WDS server. So, this video assumes you've already installed the Windows Deployment Services role along with DNS and DHCP. As you can see here on the right hand side, I have a, a server called Server 2012 that's running as a Hyper V client on my computer here. I also have to the left of that a virtual computer. Now ignore the virtual machine with Windows 8 on it for now, just 8 professional. This is going to be used as our guinea pig computer to sysprep, um, shut down, pixie boot, upload and capture that image and send back to the server. So with the assumption that you've already installed the WDS role on your chosen server with the required DNS and DHCP roles and configured them correctly, you then go ahead and modify your response response settings. So you'd right click on your server here and properties and Pixie response. Now as default it says here do not respond to any computers, any clients trying to Pixie boot. You want to select that as to respond to only known client computers from Active Directory or respond to all clients with administrator approval. I have it set as respond to all clients known and unknown. Click OK done that's all you should need to do for now okay the next thing you need to do is to insert a relevant Windows media to your server so I'm going to be deploying Windows 8 as you can see on the left here in this video so I have mounted on my desktop of the server in fact I've actually attached it as a, a, an image rather to my server um, a Windows 8.1 64-bit ISO as you can see I've mounted it here so you go into there and sources folder and you'll find in there a file called boot WIM so select your boot WIM file copy it off to the desktop or a relevant location perhaps your Windows deployment services folder um, in my case that is here so computer Windows Deployment Services folder, which it creates as you set it up correctly. Then you could perhaps place it in boot images here, which is where I would put it. So boot 64-bit images. And I would then put that in there. Okay. Quite simple. You then go back to your Windows Deployment Services again, and you'd go to boot images. And... I will delete this for one second because in fact you don't need to delete it if you if you copy and paste it into the relevant place so if you put it into that boot folder in here so WDS boot 64 images boot.wim you can see it is there set up the way I've I've been doing it is to right click add boot image and it would copy it in for you so browse to that boot wim file on the desktop open boot wim call it what you want, set up, next, it'll then import it into that same folder we are just in, so as you can see it's put it back in anyway even though it's been deleted, there you go. Okay, once you've done that, the next thing to do is to right click on that and then to capture, create a capture image. Now rename the image to capture or something relevant to that so you know what it is, so capture location of file name it wants to know where you'd like to save that capture image from the setup file um, as you can see here I've placed it on my desktop but I would not recommend that I would say go back to the same folder WDS uh, boot in the 64 images place it in a safe place put it in there so just copy and paste the file name in there that you want it to be it will then go ahead and create and extract that image from your setup uh, boot whim from your installation media. Okay, simple so far, not too difficult. Okay, just wait for this to finish. Okay, and then you tick the box to say add it to the server. Okay, file location, next, capture, finish. So now you've extracted the files, you add that then to the boot list here under boot images, so finish. 
Okay, so setup and capture. So when you Pixie boot in from any computer that you've set up ready, so in this case, this virtual machine, so this is your computer that's in reception or whatever that you'd like to um, sysprep and make a copy of because it's got all the software on that you want and it's got the right product key and it's got um, all the, uh, it's got Office on there and uh, you've got it set however you want it to be. You then go back to your Windows Deployment Services and you need to go to Install Images and right click on that and say Add Image Group. So I'm going to call them Windows 8 Images because that's what this will be images for Windows 8 okay now I've got a little group here where your images will go once you've uploaded and captured them or captured and uploaded rather so ignore the server for now that's that sort of things is done believe it or not apart from one minor thing okay so you might have to go to your vendors website and grab a network driver for your reception computer or whatever the computer is um, let's say it's a HP um, a ProBook laptop or something you go to the HP ProBook website, HP's website, grab the ProBook relevant driver for the network adapter for the Ethernet port, um, copy it to your server, right click on that, and you'd add a driver package, select it from a folder, so you just extract the downloaded files, browse to it, select it, import it, done. Okay. Second thing you'd do, because they'd be listed in the drivers group then, you'd see them in here. Secondly, the second thing you'd need to do is then assign those drivers to your boot images so that when you pixie boot your client computer, so your reception computer in this case, it knows what network drivers to use to be able to communicate with the server. Because you're not in Windows, remember, pre-execution environment is like a boot file um, as a middleman between your server and what's on your hard drive. Okay. So you'd right click on capture or setup, depending on probably both, and add driver packages to image. Now they would list in here, so you'd go next. You'd search for packages, they'd list here because obviously you've already imported them. Click next, done. Okay, that took a few minutes, it'll import them. Do the same for both, so setup and capture, um, and then go ahead. Once you've done that, you are all set for now. Let's leave it at that and go back to the client computer so we would then go let's let, let, play pretend that this is a finished server a uh, client computer rather and you've gone and you configure this exactly how you want it to be it has the software that you want on it it has the product key that you, you require for your domain your key management server in, installed etc has a, I don't know Adobe Office uh, Java anything you'd like on it you got you want to sysprep it and then shut the machine down so you can capture it now sysprep strips the computer from anything any sort of details or, or information unique to it so ironically a product key ironically um, computer name ironically accounts things like that this is where Microsoft deployment toolkit would come in and you'd actually make a task list for that but that's another video that I'll make later on so we then go to Windows on the C drive and go to system32 and in here you have a folder called sysprep S-Y-S-P-R-E-P -E you go in there and you have a little sysprep executable here run that and this will strip the computer of any information that you've made unique to it and shut the machine down afterwards Okay. Now this takes a bit of time and you don't, want, you don't want to touch the machine at all, not even to look at the, the, the hard drive to um, launch the internet, you don't want to do anything like that while it's doing this as it will mess it up or it can mess it up potentially, in my opinion it has in the past and it actually messes it up completely. So just go ahead and wait for that. Okay, and then the machine will shut down as you've requested it to afterwards. 
what you now, now need to do, now the machine has been stripped of any information and sort of in a way packaged up, is to pixie boot your computer. So don't turn your computer back on again and let it boot into Windows, okay? You've got to remember this. You need to go into your pre execution environment now. So pixie boot, which is your um, boot image here, which will be capture now. Okay, so you need to press F12 on your keyboard. Um, on my server here, I've had it set so that the machine what doesn't require F12 to boot into Pixie Boot, and the primary boot device is the Pixie Boot anyway, so it will just do that. So if I start this up, you'll see that my virtual machine. Let's pretend this is a real computer now, guys. So we've just turned it on, press F12. It's um, found its IP address because you've configured DNS and DHCP correctly. It'll boot into this pre execution environment from Capture here. It will see them listed. Just ignore this two. It's because I've imported them twice by mistake. This video, either of them are fine. You only have one, obviously. So it, uh, yeah, you can see at the bottom here. See, it says two in brackets because it's the second. It's a copy of a copy because I've imported it twice by mistake. That's my fault. Okay. So now you're you're booting into this this uh, 1.3 gigabyte sort of scratch space here with files on it. And what we can do now is use the um, deployment and capture wizard to capture this image that we've just sysprepped and shut down. So you go to uh, next here, and rather than C, it will be D because C is taken by system reserved, hidden on the drive. Now we call it, this is where you need to call it something relevant to what the computer is. So in this case, I'd call it something like image name office computers. Okay, because obviously it's relevant to where it's going. Office computers. Image description, office computer image. Okay, nice and simple. Next. Now tell it where to save it to on the hard drive locally as well as a backup. So this computer, C drive or D drive rather. Yeah, system reserve C easy. So D. Tell it where to save to. It will create a WIM file. So office computers dot WIM it will be called save now that's going to save it just to the C, the D drive at the moment so C as the Windows drive so in theory after that completed you could then boot the computer back up put a computer name back in and then copy and paste that WIM file from C drive which it will, it will, it will be the C drive when you boot back up and copy and paste it to your server and then import it as a boot image in Windows 8 images or you can do it an easy way upload image to the deployment server, server name, server 2012, connect to it, and ask for domain authentication now. Okay, so Contoso slash administrator, or whatever your administration uh, administrator credentials are, it could be supervisor. and there we go we've connected and authenticated now the image group name now remember earlier we made Windows 8 images didn't we up here and that's why because without an image group it doesn't know where to go next simple as that that image we've just had on the on this virtual machine Windows 8 8.1 uh, will now be uploading to a WIM file on the server here um, it'll create that first and then upload it so it will save it to the hard drive so you can't lose it and then it will send it over the ethernet afterwards to your server and we'll notice that will appear in here WDS images, Windows 8 images when it's uploaded it'll be in here we'll then see it in Windows 8 images and then we can use rather than the capture from Pixie Boot, we can use setup and then select our image, which we'll go through in a minute, to reinstall multiple computers at once. Obviously at this stage, you still need to put in certain things, e.g. a computer's name, account name, product keys, things like that, because this is just a simple Windows Deployment Services tutorial. Microsoft Deployment Toolkit goes along with Windows Deployment Services and you can customize the task sequence so that you don't have to put a product key in, it does it automatically. Now remember Windows Deployment Services does have an auto unattend.xml file that you can change yourself, but at the same time you don't know what your computer's name is going to be, but you could use it just to put the product keys in, I suppose.
Okay, so now it's uh, finished capturing that image, it's uploading it to the WDS server. So in Windows 8 images, we'll see it appear in there in a second. Um, once it's finished, um, sending it from one to another. Okay, so it's a quite a long process, the capturing stage, but uploading should be pretty quick if you're on a sort of 100 meg connection or a gigabit connection. It shouldn't be too bad. Okay, as you can see, it's sending it now. 97%. <clears throat> Hope you followed through so far. Um, you have to drop me a message if you have any questions, and I'll try and help you out as best I can. Okay, so the install image was created successfully. Click finish on that. Now, your computer's just going to boot up like it normally would, so I'm going to get it to pixie boot back into the pre execution environment again now. Okay, and rather than capturing an image I want to set up, but I'm going to wait a second, go back to the server and see why this hasn't appeared in here. Add an install image. Browse. Okay, as you can see, so it's gone into Windows Deployment Services Images and then Windows 8 Images and then Office Computers. Win. Open. Next, I want to import that in. Finish. And there it is. I'm just going to refresh this. Go back in. Install Images Windows 8. And yeah, just delete that then because there's already one in there. Okay, and there we go. Now we're going to try and re-download that image and, cop and install that onto this uh, computer again to test it. So rather than capturing, I'm going to set up Simples. Always takes a bit of time to do this and uh, get it working correctly, but um, you have to bear with me. I'm just refreshing my memory myself. <laughs> I set it up like four years ago and just can't remember, so <laughs> just going through it now. Because uh, we use Windows Deployment Services and Microsoft Deployment Toolkit together um, rather than just one on its own, so I'm just going through it now to work out how I did it. Okay. Okay, so authenticate again. Oh, Contoso slash administrator. My domain administrator account. Log on. Authenticate with it. As you can see, Office Computers. Wim is there, as on the server. There it is. Office Computers. Office Computers. All comes together now. You see. Next. Ask us where we want to install it to. I want to install it to the hard drive. So, I'm just going to delete the two that are there, or well, the the one that's there. Format it. Install it. Click next. Okay. Uh, it's a waiting game now, it usually takes sort of 15 minutes or so, maybe less if you're on an SSD like on this computer. I've got two Vertex 4s in RAID 0, so it should be pretty fast. Uh, copying images across the network, well, virtual network SSDs. <laughs> I mean, it really is as simple as that. I mean, the virtual machine is rebooting several times now, as it does normally, um, and compresses the files, takes the files out of um, out of the image, and sort of installs them where it needs to. Um, you know, starts the services, installs the devices for the laptop or whatever the computer. You can see how fast a solid state drive is. Pretty quick. <laughs> it's not been sped up at all because I'm recording at the same time with my voice, so. It's all real time. Um, so yeah, quite simple. Just cancel that by keystroke. And um, in theory now it'll ask us for a computer name.
Yep, so region and language, so our kingdom. Yeah, so the time zone. So this isn't a, a bad way of imaging if you've only got sort of 20, 30 computers. Um, my, my sort of employment where I work, um, we've got over a thousand so, and the different types. So we have to do it a little bit easier than this, um, automate most of this process. I'm just going to go through this quickly and just turn off automatic updates because I can't stand it running in the background without my permission. It won't be able to get out of the internet anyway. Make a local account, just call it Jake. No password. I'm a good technician. Cough. <laughs> Okay, and that's theoretically it, that's a deployed computer. So that would be a laptop or a desktop PC. Um, booting it for the first time, logging in. Um, obviously not joined to the domain or anything, but it's a start and uh, some people prefer to use Windows Deployment Services, some people prefer to use Microsoft Deployment Toolkit. Um, in fact it has joined us to the domain which is a really nice feature actually. So. Lock that in. Okay. Lock on as that local account. I haven't got any domain accounts yet apart from domain administrator, so I can't be asked to type that in. But it's a simple case of just adding the images to the, the boot group, and that's it. The same applies for Windows 7 as well. So you just basically uh, create a Windows 7 group by new group, Windows 7, create a Windows 7 computer, set it up how you want, this is prep shut down, pixie boot it, upload it, um, copy it to the image Windows 8, sorry Windows 7 image folder and deploy it, simple as that. As you can see it's just uh, installing apps that were installed before. Almost there. There we go. And that's back to how it was when we first sys prepped and shut the machine down. Awesome. Well, I'm Jake Billing. Thanks for watching this and uh, apologies for the shit audio over the top of this video. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it helps you out, guys. And uh, if I can help you out, send me a message and I'll see what I can do for you. Thanks for watching. Bye.